Hi, I'm Keegan, and this is A Bunch of Gamers. This is our 67th episode of Werewolf the Apocalypse 20th Anniversary Edition. I'm going to go around and have my players introduce themselves. Hi, I'm Sam. I play Cora. She's a Maroon in the Get of Fenris. Hi, I'm Adam. I play Mark Guides the Fallen, and he's a third of the Children of Gaia. Hi, I'm George. I'm playing Roy Mindscape. He is a Ragabosh with the Stargazers. Hi, I'm Sean. I play Zeb, Speaks of Sweet Whispers. He is a theater of the Silent Striders. Hello, my name's Thomas. I'm playing Dimitri Howells in Memory, Lupus Galliard of the Bonars. And Tyler will not be able to join us this evening. He's feeling a little under the weather, so we all hope Tyler the best. Last time, you had begun your umbral quest to find the Pathstones to solidify the alliance between the Sept of the Sacred Stone and the Sept of the Five Mirrors. You had begun your journey by first entering a juncture where spirits pointed to the symbolic meaning of mind and heart and where you thought emotions came from. The pack had decided the mind and had entered a great spiritual skyscraper that took them to the heavens facing various strange and wild trials of spiders, minotaurs, and basic office life. The pack finally reached the top of the skyscraper and were greeted with a rocket and took the rocket up, up, up before crashing into the clouds. Exiting the pack, or the packs found the spiritual, tri uh, the spiritual path that leads further into this realm. Zeb, you see the broken path and you are pointing it out to the group. How would you guys like to proceed? What would you like to do now that you have the path? Mark will just uh, transform in the hispo and kind of like nod at Zeb that, you know, he's got the lead. All right, and can I have one question? It, as far as coming up here now, are, are air spirits and whatnot clearly visible here like other things moving around us or is it just kind of clouds yes. and stillness okay. there's clouds the clouds are rolling and they feel solid to you if they come from if they pass through you or if they're coming from like your side they'll pass through you but if you stand on them you will move up and what in what form does the path take just it's just kind of knowing that it's there forming from the ethereal see, nonsense. it's uh, like a glimmering path uh, like shimmers on the clouds that move deeper into the realm. Well, we know the way. I'm I'm happy to lead for now, unless anyone else has a has something they want to explore or look for. Lead on. And I'll, I'll fall get. You begin moving as the trail starts to get harder and harder to see, as Luna disappears and Helios greets you as the clouds beneath your feet start to radiate with crimson light and violets all around you as you see various spirits crawling around. Spirits crafted of clouds, wind spirits moving this way and that, and even spirits of light that dance through the sky and vanish below the horizon like shooting stars all around you, as well as all kinds of different spirits, spirits associated with dreams and imagination and other kinds of wildlings seem to begin to ignite the morning sky that you stand upon. Dang. Is there anything these spirits are uh, chattering that Zeb and I could possibly understand? There are some that are talking simply about, you know, they speak in a kind of energy. You feel like this kind of, there's something better for me radiating off of them. The spirits of light moving off, shouting that they return home and will come back at night. The spirits of wind, much like the winds of the mountain, laugh and jeer as they move through and push clouds this way and that way in playful games. And some seem to be calling out for competitions for who can make the most pristine statue. Huh. Uh, Dimitri is just blown away by um, just the... Just the, the scenery of the Umbral lands, landscape, uh, but he's going to keep following behind whoever's leading. Uh, he's, he's shifted into lupus form, and he's going to follow the path. 
And as I said, as you guys kind of get forward, Zeb, the path becomes harder and harder to see till eventually it almost disappears from your eyes, at least. It'll likely return in the evening unless you get a spiritual guide of some kind. All right, Thurges. This is your time to shine. Well, we can definitely summon a guide. Where do we want it to take us? To where we need to be? Exactly. Well, that's definitely it. We need to talk to the spirit just right. <laughs> Considering that even in the number of light shines upon all things, when Helios is about, maybe we should ask the light spirit? I reckon we could, sure. Yeah. Uh, let's see here. I got four in a cult. Or maybe, heck, actually, they're just there. We don't need to summon them or anything. Yeah. Yeah, we, we yeah. just we kind of reach out and talk to one. Yeah. yeah. Reach out and touch face. Mark will just kind of... Uh, walk on over he's in hispo form okay and he'll kind of uh and he'll just uh speak to the spirits and speak to the light spirits in particular and say greetings spirits good morning to you as one of them bows his body is a shifting beam of light that takes the form of a human possibly a falcon as it seems to shimmer back and forth between them giving off that same beautiful crimson sort of glow. It certainly is a good morning, in all your radiance. Oh, you You guessed guessed half my name. You are a clever wolf. Oh, well thank you. But I'm not here to guess your name. I'm here for another thing. Uh, possibly an answer to uh, my question. Oh? Me and my pack here, we are on a journey, and... Our, our path has now been blinded by Helios as we follow Luna. And we were perhaps wondering if maybe you can guide us through the path that Luna may have presented to us. <laughs> I, I can guide, guide you through the morning before I go to sleep, but I can guide you. I only request as far as you are able to. Very well. I... We'll gladly accept this if you are willing to perform something for me. Oh, but of course, how rude of me. I should have asked first. But what can I do for you? I ask that you seek the greatest artist you can find, and that you can convince to paint the glory of the sunrise, and make sure that they put emphasis upon the crimson lights, so that I may continue to inspire with my very presence. Of course. I'll gladly take this task. Good, good. Then, this way, oh, I see you lack the sight of it. Come, come. I will show you the path. This way, as the spirit begins to move and shift, almost like a beam of light, he moves this way and that way, striking horizontal clouds and radiating to show you the way as you move across the clouds. As he moves up and you must now climb some clouds. So could I get a strength athletics roll? Difficulty six, please, from everyone. Do our thirges know if uh, shifting into Krynos would not be great at this point? Um, from what's your, what's what? your, yeah, from what aspect? I, that's a too broad of a yeah. question. Oh, uh, just to boost my strength. I mean, I don't really need to, but. Like, you can, yeah. like, I, I'm not sure what you think the negative is, though. Oh. Uh, that, um, that's, well, that's the question. Oh, the negative being, um, I don't know if Helios, like, like, light spirits are against, um, having Krynos about up here, um, or if they're too not like i guess not too heavy for the clouds or anything because umbra magic but yeah just I'm, I'm, i'll just say i just feel i had a very amicable conversation with the spirit and i'm pretty sure the spirit knows i'm basically the answer is, is that you know sam most spirits and most garu assume that once you take krinos you're ready to fight That's okay all. okay all righty um yeah i'll just go with my hamid then Okay. Hey, Keegan, I forgot that I get one strength from being in lupus. Can I just roll a 1d10? Yep. Yes, okay, you thank you. No. All right. 
<laughs> Hilarious. Well, these clouds oh, are so soft and God. fluffy, we can't climb them. Well, so what it is is that your mind doesn't believe that the clouds are substantial. So, Cora, even though you have a ton of strength and athleticism, because you lack a certain level of belief, your hands aren't grabbing and you're not pulling yourself up. What's happening is your hands are passing through the clouds themselves. <laughs> Fantastic. Uh, that is the same for you, Dimitri. You try and jump and you go right through the cloud. As you guys watch Zeb start to scale it like a madman, uh, quickly followed by Mark. It's at this point that Roy also tries and he slips and he falls through a hole in the clouds. Someone can try and grab him with a dex athletics roll very quickly if they have hands. Or I'll if try. they have teeth, they can bite him, but they will do one lethal damage. Mm -hmm. I'll try to grab him. All right. Cora? Oh. Eight. As, as he starts to fall through Cora, your arm launches out and you grab him by the arm as you slide slightly to the edge of the cloud. Catch yourself as you force yourself to believe that the clouds are real, that the clouds are strong, and you start slowly trying to pull him up. I need a strength check now. Uh, Roy, you can roll dexterity. Every success you get gives her a bonus die. Okay. Team <laughs> Damn. Oh my god. That's a 1 in 1,000 roll. <laughs> uh. Cora, you get three bonus dice. Wow, nice. Fantastic. I'll just roll three more. Hopefully I get anything. <laughs> yeah, I got as anything. You, <laughs> as you grab, you one arm pull him up. You're struggling as you're, the hole is awkward. And, Roy, your legs kick up, you catch the cloud, and you help yourself up as you're pulled up. The spirit calls down, Come, come! The, the winds, winds are blowing and Helios, Helios continues, continues to, to rise. As you see his skin starting to change from bright crimson to a deep orange. Alrighty, I will try to climb up again. Alright, Yumo, everyone who failed uh, will be able to climb up again. This time, it's just taken a little bit of time, so you do succeed as you three get up there. It's a little more difficult, and it's just cost you a bit of time now. As you are now higher, and you're on almost these kind of darker clouds that hang higher in the sky, as the light blue starts to become a little darker uh, here, as the spirit goes, Not much time this way before you have to speak to others, I think. As he Alrighty. continues we'll you down the path, and the sun has fully risen, the crimson is gone. Before he fades away, Keegan, um, I wanted to, you know... Tell us your name, friend. The artwork needs a label, a title, and yours should be the one it bears. My, my name, name is Crimson Radiance. Ah, but that of was course. My, that was my second guess. <laughs> Thank you, Crimson Radiance. And I'll give a little hispo bow. I look forward to the glory you try and capture, the beauty of my parent, and how I accentuate that beauty. And you see him slowly turn to kind of like ash of red and seeds itself into the clouds to be regrown at sunset. As you're a step higher, the wind is both stronger and lighter here. You can breathe as... Algar are able to breathe in this realm, but this, the wind spirits seem larger but lankier. Thin, gaunt, but enormous. As they move through the umbral skies and grab whole fistfuls of clouds and sweep them in great gestures, creating almost miniature continents that you can hop across and climb. At this point, um, is the path completely cold, Keegan? The, you still can't see the path since the sun is still up, but there are still other spirits to speak to that you could try and gain, sure. gain um, favors from. Perhaps we can hitch a ride with one of these giant cloud spirits. Yeah, I don't think, I don't think it's a bad idea to, to get their attention, though. And they're trying to gain the attention of a giant. Zeb, how are you getting this go? Very well. 
All right, I'm, I'm just trying to think here real quick if it should just be a just a yeah, just like, summon out or just straight up command spirit, and I'm not exactly sure. Hmm. Um, I, I think so far just reaching out and just talking has worked because uh, that that because like say something in game. Yeah, yeah. of course. Oh, okay. Speak loud and with purpose, and they should hear. I also have a suggestion. You have wings. We do <gasps> have wings. <laughs> Zeb does have wings. Oh my gosh. Yeah. Uh. You can get their attention fairly easily, I think, if you fly up to see them. Yep. Yeah, Zeb and Roy both have spirit speech and both have wings. All right. Yeah. Um, I'll hang down here with Fomori's Bane then. All right. We'll get Dimitri. And I'd like to listen in on their conversation All if right, I can. So, so I'll wait. I'll wait for a new one to form. Okay. Um, and and when it does, Lightscape, will you come along? I will. All right. And so when a new one forms, that's when I will I will fly up to it. When the like you said, like when the wind spirit manifests and kind of creates that 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 formation, I will I will rise up to that with Roy. As you see it, as you, you're you drifting over the thing, as the spirit looks down at you, its eyes a swirling maelstrom as its mouth opens and goes... What are you doing so high up, strange little birds? I stand in awe of your majesty as you form before me, something I have never seen, but am inspired by as we fly through this vast and unknown place. We are following the trail that has burned away as Helios is ascending and require your help, your wisdom, and your glory to carry us forward. If you would, we will owe you a great boon that we will pay back in time, or I will, I will bind this oath to myself. Name your cost, and I shall give you not only energy of my own body to fuel this journey, but also meet the expectation or the goal which you have in mind. As the spirit seems to think a moment, as he looks at Roy and goes, Is this the only one of your flock? There are four others who are unable to fly in this way, unable to even attempt to emulate the power that you display here now. They would need assistance in this journey also. Hmm. I was about to create a great updraft, but, ah, uh, storms come with that. So my advice to you is, choose where the clouds strike the earth. Okay, and for Sean Wolf's, Sean Wolf's thing is just, just pick a point that he's going to hurl us to, essentially? Uh, no, he's saying that he's going to hurl you up, but when he hurls you up, because it's a draft of wind, he's creating a giant updraft that's going to uh, puncture another layer of wind, and if Zeb would like to make a science roll, he can know what that means when he says a storm will strike the earth, or clouds will strike the earth. Uh, I'm, I'm worried this means tornado. Uh, in science? Yeah, it means Actually, tornado. Yes. Okay. All right. Uh, then that means umbral tornado, correct? No. Oh, so back into... Oh, oh. Yeah, so he's saying oh. choose where the tornado is going to touch down and he As will a create... Cost. Oh. Yes. <laughs> oh, this is, this is cause and effect. Oh, God. Um... Okay. All right, Roy, here's a riddle. If you were going to be a tornado that strikes somewhere, where would you want that tornado to strike? Out in the middle of nowhere would be preferable for life saved. What's the least populated state in the United States? Wyoming? Yep. Wyoming, the United States of America, the North American continent. As he blows at you and the whole cloud formation that you're all on rapidly crosses the continental U.S., Oof. And the spirit moves and goes, and before it gets ready to thrust its arms up, it looks you deep in the eyes, or what you assume is looking you deep in the eyes, since its whole eye engulfs your entire body. It goes, I'm sure that the lizards and the violence and the prairie dogs will understand that you placed human lives over there. Does he th- creates this giant upswell of air that knocks all of you up. Can I get a stamina roll from everyone but Roy and Zeb? 
uh, question for you, Keegan. I thought yes. we made a temporary pack with Dimitri. We did. So Dimitri does have wings. So Dimitri doesn't have to make oh. this roll either. That's what oh. I thought. I was th I was a little confused. I was like, I, I, I got some like information mixed up in my head. I was like, wait, no, that's can't, fine. I can't we fly in the humble well realm? Dexterity athletics. And I was like, wait. no, just just stamina. Oh, just stamina. Yep. Current form stamina. I got you, Dimitri. Or I got you, Thomas. <laughs> Don't worry. I got you guys to remember things I can't remember. <laughs> as you go up, as you start swirling, as the air pushes you up, Cora, you get banged around a little bit as you take a point of bashing damage that will heal uh, soon after you change forms. You're in your Hamid form, right? I am. Yeah, so once you leave Hamid form, the bashing will regenerate, but you get beat up a little yeah. bit by the wind. Your hair goes all kinds of crazy actually everyone's hair goes all kinds of crazy but yours goes in whips yeah that, you know that terrible bad wind whip when the hair just whips you in the eye and you're just like god why don't i just shave my face and my head yeah, yeah. shave everything i must be the <laughs> hairless wonder that's that's the feeling cora's got going on right now as you essentially ping pong up into the higher stratosphere the clouds becoming incredibly thin as you all start to balance on tiny clouds here and there, the sky becoming a deep navy blue, even with the sun in the sky, and the beginning twinkles of starlight hiding behind the darkening tapestry that hangs above you as the light of the moon is almost visible as well, and you think you might be able to now follow the paths again. Ooh, can we make a roll to try to find a pass? Yes, or can and we... it oh, will be sweet. Perception Occult Difficulty um, difficulty 9. You need two successes. Awesome. Uh, it happens. Yeah, no problem. I'm, I'm not going to mulligan it. As you guys kind of look around, it's not really good that... Or you can't really see much yet. But for anyone who is not... Uh, so... Mark and Cora, to move around, you'll need to do dexterity uh, athletics to move around as there are gaps in the clouds now that you have to hop on and hop oh. between to get to. Question, can we not just carry them you while can. we fly? You can. Then let's just do that. All right. Mm -hmm. Who wants to carry who? Roy, do you want to carry your girlfriend? <laughs> oh I was actually gonna. I was thinking that just to like piss her off. Like, it, you need to lean on me this time. Pour, pour Do one it. out for Morgan. Uh, <laughs> uh, if we're gonna do that, Cora's gonna shift into lupus to make herself lighter. Okay. Mark will do the same. And Kyle will do the same. I gotta think about the best form to carry in here, because Zeb was in his boat, and I don't think he's gonna come to carry a member of the party in his mouth. So, um... Glabro would be fine. That that extra two strength. Yeah, yeah Glabro would be Just scruff perfect. him, you know? Yeah, yeah Demetri will do the same. He'll, he'll shift into Glabro. Okay. Just hold me like a good doggo. That's right. <laughs> yeah. I guess Glabro would be the best one. Well, Roy can say that out loud. I'm not. <laughs> oh. <laughs> it was meant to be more like a snide remark for the the group okay not in uh, the recording so roy is picking up cora dimitri uh, you're p who are you picking up um i'll i'll pick up mark or kyle okay or, uh, yeah so which is it uh, i'll pick up mark all Yay! right and so zeb you get kyle well, this works out quite well because each each of the three has one spirit speech user that's true as you start flying through the sky trying to look for something, you see something off in the distance. Can I get a perception alertness? Are you fucking kidding me? <laughs> it's one of those nights, I guess. It, it's not just you, Sam. I promise you. I have had one roll that wasn't a zero tonight. <laughs> I had Why? one that was negative, and the other one was straight tens. That's my that's my life. 
currently. Oh no, my life is actually succeeding at something at all. <laughs> you saved Roy, who's helping you fly. I'm glad that Roy is nothing at all. Damn. <laughs> oh no, my grip is starting to lessen. <laughs> oh. Dimitri, Zeb, and Roy, it looks like a South Pacific Asian man meditating with the sun and moving with it, standing on one foot and balancing on, on the cloud. I'll just start flying towards the, towards him. Yeah, man, yeah, we'll take we'll take a flight down there and check it out. Dimitri will do the same. Okay. As you guys start flying over towards him, he opens his eyes and he looks over you all. Greetings, brothers. Um, dances at midnight. Crazy greetings, dances at midnight. My name is Mindscape. It is good to meet you, Mindscape. It's not. It's Roy Mindscape. Dimitri is Howl's in memory. That one over there. And I'll Greet nod my head. Uh, greetings to you, brother. And this one, as he motions over at Zeb. Speak some sweet whispers, brother. It's a pleasure. It was a pleasure as well. And the three you carry. The one I'm carrying here is Cora Two Hearts. Cora, like, kind of nod her head down. Like, hello. This is Kyle Guards the Low. Dimitri says, This is Mark Guards the Fallen. It is a pleasure to meet you all as he leaps off of the cloud and starts to hover a bit in front of you. What brings you here to the astral realm? Uh, we're in search of some path stones. Ah, so you seek the realms of Sokta. That we do. It'll take a few days, but possibly longer if your companions are too injured to walk on their own. Walk? Yes. You're high enough now as he steps, he makes a step like he's stepping on a step and he goes up further. Guides the phone oh. will kind of wiggle a little bit to kind of indicate, hey, let go, let, let me go. All right, I'm going to let go of Guides the Fallen. Pause out. As you, you kind of land. Cole kind of growl at Roy. Like, let me go. I'll grab tighter before I let go. Uh. And then I'll, I'll set myself down next to her. As, Snap at him. Oh, <laughs> and <laughs> Kyle gets dropped as well as yeah, he's I'll, standing I'll set, there. Yeah, I'll set Kyle down. Yep. As you're all kind of standing there and he goes... Oh, I'm sorry, you're not familiar with the realm. No, I think this is our first time out up this high. Oh, yes. If you run, you'll be able to follow the solar winds. The thing about the realm is even though you are just... You're not walking on anything. In fact, you don't even have to walk. It's just something as he starts to float up and down, left and right. Something that helps the, uh, the newly initiated move through this realm, but you will still feel like you physically run or exerted yourself. Interesting. But, yes. Sounds much like the flying that the three of us kind of do. Yes, and as you get closer to the earthly realm, further down into the clouds, you start to follow earthly laws again. So if you hopped from the clouds, you would fall back to the penumbra. But the further you go up, the harder it is for gravity to hold on to you. I, th I think I understand. You just will your body forward. Exactly. Hmm. Uh... You said something about following the solar winds? The solar winds help. They move this way and that as <clears throat> the incarnate of the sun will sometimes give off winds that make it easier to travel to the other spiritual incarnations of this realm. Others, but others simply walk the moon paths or the dark paths or the star paths to various realms and speak with the planets and gain their wisdom and their insight. I mean, this is why the Sept of the Stars exists to teach those of Chimera to wander these ways and learn the ways of our great spiritual patrons. Hmm. I see. I'm still fairly inexperienced in the ways of the Umbra. 
but I'm still learning and my mind has been broadened more and more within these last month of travels. Ah, I see. Well, if you're trying to find path stones, remember to not go against the solar winds, otherwise you'll end up into the realm of the wind rider, Katonka Sanak, who is the incarnate of Helios. If it's a word of caution, then it's definitely something that we should probably not do. Not a word of caution, just something that'll help you on your journey. Katonka Sonak doesn't really carry path stones. That is not his purview. He is the child or the incarnate of Helios, not the incarnate of Luna. If you seek path stones to create moon bridges, that is why you want to speak to Sokta. Then follow the winds we shall. Ah, very well. Just be careful with them. They take you all over the astral realm. You may end up in the realm of Matagar, or even Maros, or Nurgle, if you are not careful. It is easy to get lost here. Much wisdom will be attained when you do it, but if you are trying to journey swiftly, then I just counsel caution. While it is in our best interest to move quickly, it is still faster to move with a purpose and not with haste. True. The journey there, then, if you follow correctly, will take about five days, which means you will end up in the realm of Sokta at the same lunar phase as now. That is a good thing. It is, because this phase, it's... A lot of the moon paths are revealed, correct? No, it's the exact opposite. <laughs> because we're going to be following by the, the solar the, winds. Because as the moon gets closer to new, the darker the paths get, and then it'll start becoming crescent again, which are still dim. Ah, uh, okay. So, one more question before we continue our journey. Um, how would we know where we're going? Do we just travel on the winds using our intuition? Yes, you try and guide yourself to that as he points to the giant moon in the sky. Well, there you go. As the stargazer there goes, if there's anything else before you go, just let me know. Otherwise, I wish you swift speed and much luck on your journey. I think you've answered my questions for now. I would return if you're wisdom is needed. Oh, I don't stay up here all the time. (laughs) My sept is nearby. That's all. I just mean to contact you if it's needed in the future. Ah, I see. Perhaps we'll run across each other here or ground side. Perhaps. I, I suppose I will need to go to the physical realm soon lest I lose my body. Safe travels. May the spirits guide you. May they guide you as well. May the winds be in your favor. And from there, I'm just going to will myself towards Luna. All right. You start willing yourself towards Luna. The rest of you? Yeah, I think I'll do the same. Okay. That'll work. Let's look up them rules for long distance running. As that is what you will be doing. Yeah, Dimitri's going to shift back into Lupus and start... uh, drifting towards the moon. Alright. Mark will stay in lupus and will himself towards the moon. And real quick, I need a stamina athletics roll from everyone. Difficulty four. Oh. Hey. Finally. Who knew all Cora needed was to be in space. Holy shit. (laughs) All of mine were positive rolls. Alright. As you all succeed as you continue on into the stars you go a little further and a little faster than you'd normally go as you finally get to a spot as you see bits of small space de- debris that seem large enough to house you in- as burrows for you to sleep in for the night 
This continues on for the total of five days as you hop and skip between meteorites and are passed by spirits of falling stars and other various concepts before you start getting to the surface of the moon. As you get closer and closer, you are hit by the radiating light of hundreds of thousands, if not millions of loon spirits. There is a sliver of loons that carry themselves much like the ones you saw. The, ho the largest portion of the host are the loons you saw at the start of your journey. Their bodies cast in shadow and a cloak of moonlight around them as they hold out lanterns that seem to beckon all who seek knowledge. On one side of them you see great warriors, either in the shape of men or wolves, crafted of pure moonlight as their bodies radiate pure energy. And further out, on the other side of the watchers, you see spirits of pure shadow who still give off a little bit of faint light that gives the impression of their outline as you start moving closer and closer to the great silver mass that also ha seems to have black sands down below before finally landing. You land on a small sliver of silver earth and to, this, and to your right, you see great fields of pure black sand, though within sight, you see an oasis with pools of water that seem to radiate light with great trees of silver and gold and grays and various vibrant, beautiful colors that seem to defy all logic that push away the darkness. Though you notice at the tip of it, there is a path of light to take as well. So if you so choose, how would you like to proceed? Are there any spirits around? Like well, right, right in front of us? Not right in front of you. That you can see at okay. least. Oh, but we're on the actual moon at this point. Okay. I have an idea. Uh-oh. No, <laughs> I'm kidding. I'm kidding, I'm kidding. So what's your idea? Um, I don't. I say we request uh, an audience with Sokta. So is it Sokta or Sokta? Sokta. Yeah. We just request an audience with Sokta. Is either either a cult role, or just like knowledge for the Guru, as they as they you know collect moonstones to open those paths. Is is this is this something that you do? You directly request from. The, you know, the Lady Celestine of Luna to have a piece of her to guide the Guru way. You may roll an intelligence occult because it is Guru lore, but it is not necessarily, well, very widely spread lore. Well, yeah, no, I, so I, I'm guessing it'd diff be eight. Di into, yeah, into cult diff eight. You know a little bit. You know that all path stones come from her, but you have but you know for a fact that not all spiritual journeys come to her but there's always testing there's always some sort of test but it might not be her that's giving the test it's usually associated with her giving the test sure. it's just not okay. directly in front of her like sure. a distant sure. hand in some cases another idea came to mind keegan this ray of light that's coming from the oasis is it much similar to that of a moon bridge not quite it's just radiating a kind of light to show that it's separate from the dark sands i say we head to the oasis when we get there we ask perhaps to see if there's a way to start this test whether it's before the lady or not step one is always the hardest mark will switch back to hispo form okay so, you're going to try and get to the oasis, so are you going to just take the most direct path? Is there an actual path to take? As I said, the silver streak continues on past the horizon before you, and you, when you look at the oasis, you do know that, it's, that there's a silver path on the other side of it that reaches it. So, by that, 
following this path will likely lead you to the oasis. I don't see why not. Yeah. yeah. Start on the path. Hi ho, hi ho. Are we still under the um, rules of willing ourselves? Nope. Now you you just walk normally. Okay. I didn't know if that changed based on the plane that we transitioned to. As you start moving and walking, you see one of those spirits again. It's got its lantern out as it moves it over the sands, and you see what seem like small creatures, but horrifyingly scattering and moving back into the sands. It's light seeming to change the actual color of the sands before it brings it back, and it looks over you all. It gives kind of a bellow. Mark, Mark guides, guides the phone. As it speaks it in the Garu tongue. It, my ears will perk up in interest and go, Yes. Before your allies, you must answer and answer to Do you understand? Mark thinks back to keeping the promise that he has with his leader of the importance of his sept, why it's important that this alliance needs to take place in his eyes. And we snap back to Mark confronted with this question. I do understand. Do you fear that in doing this, in forging this alliance, you are in fact the shadow of your core? One who shadows peace, apes it, but is its opposite. Mark will shudder a little bit in his paws, and he'll look up to the loon creature, and he will say, Of course, of course I fear that I might become this. Of course I fear that the path I take down might lead me to this. But, for my true goal, for peace, I must go on despite these fears. And that is the truth I know. As the spirit nods, and then it looks at you, it seems like it's searching. And finally, it speaks out its voice like a splash of cold water. It asks, Are you ready? To guide the fallen dreams of others who seek also peace, but lack the institutional power that has been gifted to you. To which Mark will respond, As is my namesake, not only will I guide the fallen in their passing, but I will guide their dreams and I will guide their purposes as I live on and as my spirit lives on that it is my way as a thurge and as a child of Gaia. Spirit nods and brings its lantern down as it points and the uh, path seems to turn into a strange amalgamation of serpents, mountain lions, and deer antlers as the spirit goes, Then walk upon the, the trail, walk upon it, and absorb those dreams and step on them as you tread towards yours. I'm kind of thinking maybe Mark should change to Krynos because this is like trial time. So I'd imagine this would be appropriate. Any any sort of way this could be taken negatively? You're ready for combat. Well, true, but I'm also ready for trial. Or maybe Glabro. Ooh, Glabro. Glabro would probably be the best one. Yeah, if I remember a couple sessions back, maybe one or two. Um, what's his name? Um, when they were having a conversation, I'm, I can't remember names. I'm sorry. Uh, they essentially shifted to Glabro to have a very formal conversation to start the um, moot. Okay. So and it's just honestly, it's just been a bit since I've been in Glabro. So let's go with Glabro. Okay. Mark will change into Glabro. You go into Glabro? Then he will yeah. walk the path. You walk the path as the rest of you seem pulled with him as the spirit disappears and you continue, you're you all pulled along and there is another spirit there. It stands with the lantern hanging forward. Dimitri howls in memory. Yes, I, I hear you. What will you do when your kid are broken across the lands. I'm sorry, I just need a moment to think. Um, okay. Out of character. <laughs> 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 yeah, 
These are heavy questions. I think we're all going to need a moment to think when he asks. <laughs> Start thinking now. Uh, Start getting into character I now. I need a five name? paragraph response. Footnotes and references, please. Oh no, I didn't study. <laughs> Dimitri is going to pause for a moment as he considers the question. And after a moment of thought, he will say, When my kin are are broken i will howl in their memory i will sing of their triumphs and their failures so that no one will forget them as it nods for a moment and then looks at you and its voice though it seems like a whisper also booms all around everyone and you get this kind of cold breeze that whips through you as the spirit seems to ask and do you blame in your heart the garu who saved you but came but a breath too late to save the ones you love speak out so all may hear just softballing them away at you guys <laughs> just lobbing them at you <laughs> Softball, this feels like a bowling ball to the head. <laughs> nah. <laughs> Honestly, this one I could knock out of the park for myself. The um, SIGs was actually kind of rough. And Dimitri is going to speak. And he says, I I do not blame them for the... I, I do not blame them for the destruction of my kin for the for the destruction of my home i hate them for not arriving in time but the rage in my heart and what i know conflict because i i know that they could not have arrived sooner but i also know now in the last few days that not all of my kin were killed that the kinfolk of my home some of them have survived so i i do not i do not blame them for the deaths of my kin the spirit nods and holds out its hand as you see this kind of trail of blood form walk upon it for they will guide you through much and dimitri is going to slowly take a step forward and then walk along the path of blood as the rest of you are pulled with Dimitri, as you move further along, as the oasis seems now further away, as the path seems to turn, and there is another one with its lantern, and it speaks up. Zed speaks in sweet whispers. I am here. Do you feel yourself an adequate guide for Roy's moral compass? I am... Um conflicted as sometimes the hypocrisy of my words to guide him are contrary to the feelings in my mind as I rage against the wrongs that I hold within me and carry them by the day. I am adequate at times but I know my flaws deeply and I know the ways that I would be in error and lead him astray. I hope my words carry better for him than advice that I myself could not possibly follow. Do you fear that your failures to follow your own advice will be the reason he falls? Do you still suspect that he will? These are two questions I will ask. answer the first. I witnessed firsthand the whispers in men's ear that drove them to desire and acquire and betray those that they cared for and sacrificed great to stop that knowing I could not do enough and I fear I cannot. However, I am not concerned for his fall as I previously was. What I have foreseen, what has been foretold, what I feel, makes me and witnessed makes me believe he is on his path and he need not have me guide him but accompany him and counsel him when he asks the right questions as he discovers them for himself for i will not lead him to what he needs to know he will find it himself the spirit seems to nod as he puts out his arm and you see 
a path of serpents, lions, and feathers tied together and bound. The feathers seem to be that of owl feathers as the spirit goes, Then walk your path to a greater closeness. All right, he'll step forward, Keegan, kind of, you know, the, the watch for the serpent, the, the maw of the lion clutching for the feathers as he, as he presses forward. As you all continue on, there is but another one. Cora, two hearts. Yes, Spirit. Though you know her fall was wrong, and you know your responsibility into it, do you ever fear that she was right? That you've become such a debt? That the little girl that you once were would look at you with disgust that your bullheadedness would have led you and her into equal bloody ruin. I think that in this situation, fearing it is not the right emotion. Because I do not fear that that would have happened since she has already fallen. And that's not some... And I have changed since then. I feel I'm on my way to changing for the better. I am still figuring myself out in where I belong in the get. I do not feel like I have become too bullheaded, though I do know that I have become stronger in my convictions. I feel that if she were with us now, that I don't think these changes would have come quickly enough and perhaps maybe I would have led us into ruin. But the future is not set in stone. There is always thing there are always things to learn, and if you take the, the opportunity to learn those things, then the future that has been foreseen, perhaps, can be changed. Do you ever think her fall was a stepping stone for your own self-actualization? I think that, yes, while not necessarily the only stepping stone that could have happened, yes, I do. I am not thankful for it because I do hope, I, I would have hoped that it would have been in a different manner. But yes, I do, truthfully. The spirit nods as it holds out its lantern, as you see a path of old diary entries, yours and B's interlacing, various items and toys that you used to trade between each other as they move off as the spirit nods and goes walk the path and tread upon the memories that brought you to this place and to your future Cora tears up a little bit and she does walk uh looking at the at the different objects and diary entries catching you know sentences here and there remembering writing them and like notes pass and pass back and forth between the two just memories flashing. Finally, you're right at the mouth. You're very close. Like, you can see the the oasis again. It's only but maybe a hundred yards away as the next one stands, holding the lantern. Roy Mindscape. I'm here. Do you ever think, or do you ever reckon, that you are as foul as the dead who killed your family? For how many mortals have you murdered? Who unwittingly did the will of the worm? And do you ever fear that if you did not know them in your previous life, that you would have murdered your family for the same evils that they brought to your sex rounds if you had the chance to? So much for these softball questions. <laughs> what are you talking about? Just loving them. They're very easy for me. Well, <laughs> <laughs> Surprisingly oh. easy. <laughs> oh man, who'd have thought? Uh, do I believe that I might possibly be a get or hold get ideals? I don't think so. I only, knowing what I know now, I would have stopped my family back then from committing the deeds that we did. But even back then, since we were ignorant and unaware of our deeds, that still should not mean 
death should come. How many ignorant men have you murdered? Men who thought differently, and men who knew thought differently. Insect men who thought they were simple super soldiers helping a company out from violence. How many did you blame for their ignorance? Each situation arose with different variables. From my understanding, we did not show any aggression. My family did not show any aggression. But these insect men that you talk about, the Fomori, everywhere we went, they always showed aggression. The people unwittingly who just pass things along are ignorant and they have no reason to die. Do you, I don't even believe the office worker who follows the weaver should die for they are also ignorant. But then one last one for you, my skate. If you came across an employee of Magadon who created an antidepressant, or thought he created an antidepressant, but his masters would use it to stop any kinfolk from ever experiencing the first change ever again, and, and the only path was, was to murder him, for his, his mind could not accept the umbral, or if, if you took, took him to the umbra, it would shatter his mind. Is, is your killing just, even though he showed no hostility towards you, and, and all of his actions came from altruism? After opening his mind, or broadening his vision, to show that his actions would have devastating consequences and he still refused to relent, then yes, that would be considered aggression as it now would affect my family. As, as I said, said his mind, mind would not open. It, it would shatter, shatter if you tried, tried to show, show the, the people, people to him. him. You can only, only choose one, one of two roads for him. him. Madness, Madness or death. death. Or to, to leave, leave him alone. alone and, and deal, deal with the consequences, consequences of it. Well, that last option would not happen, and I would not leave him to madness, as that would be much more torturous than death. Do you ask these questions to bring out my... to bring out thoughts that I never cared to think about, and here I am, thanking you for it. I illuminate as it shows the path as its murals to you in various states, various forms of aggression, murdering, killing, shifting. I illuminate who you are to yourself. Walk the path. And I'll start walking. You are all dragged and you all appear into the Great Silver Garden. There are butterflies of violet and emerald and sapphire floating around in all directions, birds of exquisite beauty in patterns and shapes and colors that are not seen on Gaia nor the physical realm. The jungles about and the beautiful streams of starry moonlight filling pools in silver, silver bastions. As you see a beautiful woman there Turning, her hair silver curled, her eyes filled with brightness, one eye completely darkened, the other one of silver. Her body is partially covered as she has only but a simple cloak as the rest of her is completely naked. As she steps forward to you carrying sort of a regal kind of appearance, and she seems to be able to lock eyes with you and is as tall as you in almost in whatever form you are in that is the form she see that is the height she seems to be as she approaches and gives sort of a devilish smile you are the pack you are expecting us yes, yes. you did, you the, did the, the right, right to, to search, search the path stone, stone. And, thus and thus my eyes, eyes were drawn, were drawn to, you. to you i have sent, I have the, sent the other pack to a fallen to a to dead garen where they will where find they will an find old path stone, stone and reuse it. it. But to but you, to you. As she grabs into the water and pulls out, 
I do I have them, have them. Though, though, though I do I require a payment of gnosis from each of you. Take what you need. Of course. Now, now the last the thing last I require, thing require for secrets, for secrets are, are powerful. powerful. I want, I want you to speak, to speak them, them in front of me and your companions. You have already, you have already faced, faced most of the trials, trials. And, your and your secrets will give this stone the last bit of flicker, of flicker and light that is required. That is required. Each, of Each of you, you speak, speak to, to me and speak, speak to your companions. Your greatest, your greatest fear, 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 your greatest, greatest shame, shame, and what you would be willing to give up beyond your life. For that is that all, is all for, that for that already belongs, belongs to Gaia. To Gaia. What, else what else would you, would you give, give in the, in apocalypse? the apocalypse? The spirit of Sokta turns and looks at Dimitri, her eyes blazing, waiting, expecting. Dimitri is going to look up at the spirit and um, also kind of glance to those assembled around him and... He speaks up and says, My greatest fear is that I will never find another place that I can call home. My greatest shame is that I could not do more to have saved my cairn when it was under attack. And in the apocalypse, I am willing to give up my memory for victory. She nods and then turns and looks at Mark Guides the Fallen. My fear... My fear is that, yes, that I do begin following the path of the shadow. That I will no longer be able to see the light in things. But my greatest shame, my greatest shame is perhaps thinking this could be the best option. Perhaps losing myself to the avatar of war for Unicorn could be what needs to happen. But I know this goes against my tribe. I lost this. That's why I feel shame for it. So, it's a path. It is it's a teetering path that I wander. And if there is something to give up for the apocalypse, other than myself, it would be my sanity. So that in my madness, not only will I slay enemies and bring glory to Gaia, but that that is the burden that I will guide. From the fallen. She nods and turns to Roy. My fear has been one that has stuck with me since the day I can remember. I fear of losing family. I fear of losing Zeb. Of Kyle and Mark. Cora and now Dimitri. I don't see a day in my future that's not brightened by them. So for that I do not wish them to, to leave. My biggest shame is that I'm not strong, I'm not powerful, I'm not bright, nor do I have the gift of foresight to save the ones that I hold dear to myself. I don't know how I can go about protecting, except by just questioning, and I wish I could do more. And to answer your last question with what I would give up, I would give up my gifts, I would give up my ability to shift, I would give up my rage, my spirit, all of my glory and honor. I would give my mind, I would go mad just to try and keep the Garu from falling. She nods as you notice the stone is starting to actually ignite a little bit and has a soft glow as she turns to Korra, her hand gripping the stone. I am a warrior of Gaia. For Gaia, that is my great. That is where my greatest loyalty lies, and so I fear falling to the worm, following that dark path, and losing that loyalty that I have. And that is because my biggest shame was to lead others onto that path, as well as leading packmates to their death. My heart aches with it, and there is nothing that I can do to make that have not happened and the thing that i would give up for the vic for guy's victory in the apocalypse is my pride the thing that i hold very very dear to my heart 
something that everyone can see if they know me. I am a prideful person, and I would give it all for Gaia's victory. The stone shakes a little bit in her hand, and she turns and looks at Zeb. A story of shame you shall have. There is a woman called Ruth, Harmony of Solace, a rune of the Silent Striders, Talon of Owl, Vengeance of the Widow, Alpha of Dread Corral, Mother of Prudence, Constance, and Zebulon of the Gru Nation. The hands of her love, her soulmate, her husband, father of her children, warriors of Gaia, are upon my hands, and I cannot face her. I cannot face her gaze. I cannot stare upon her. I cannot divulge to her what I have robbed and taken from her of a people that have no homeland and no hope. My greatest fear is there is nothing left to sacrifice. There is no more. The well is dry and tapped. And I, a hand, blood, sweat, what else is sacrificed? What else can be given when there is no more? Will alone? That rage, anger, an emotion, something intangible, I do not have a resource. I do not know what else to give. I struggle in my mind to know this. I fear there is no solution. What am I willing to give up? I am without a homeland. I have family here, in the here and now, in the present, knowing that is tangible, knowing that perhaps in the end there is no end. I will merely fade away what I would sacrifice instead. The connection I have to Owl, those whispers in my ear, that guidance, that little solace I can take on a cold night, on a bare mountain, in the, in the most treacherous and terrible of places, knowing they are near to me. I would give that up, knowing they are gone. No security, no catch, no place to go, no place to turn. Should that offset the horrors that would await us in Apocalypse? And she smiles. The stone is a bit smaller now, gleaming, perfectly silver, as she walks over and nods. She looks as if she's about to place it in Zeb's hand before she pops it into his eye socket, and she goes, boop, boop, boop. <laughs> that was that a was oh, so <laughs> Whoa! Oh my god. I'm sorry. I'm close to my new face. And the joke seems too delectable to let go. But you have answered me well. And so here, it feels like she's touching all of your heads at once, your foreheads. And you all receive the rank one gift at no experience cost, Lambent Sight. And lastly, and lastly a, vision, a, vision, a vision, for it is, it is the crescent, crescent moon, moon, and it is, and a, it is time a time to, to see. see. As you all see yourself in a great, you, see a, you all see these great dark clouds that loom over the sept of the sacred stone. The stones hanging above as you see a unicorn and a great serpent that has the head of a mountain lion and the antlers of a deer caught in great battle. The great stones shatter and the mountain seems to crumble. A mighty, mighty storm seems, to, seems poised to swoop in, yet a cold wind swirls about it and swirls all about you. The ground begins to fester with sores and pain, and circling above is a great falcon. Then, upon closer inspection, is rotting, its feathers falling, flesh hanging from it, an eye hanging but on a tether, and its beak partially broken, yet seems to be able to keep itself aloft in the air. The vision ends, and you find yourself already on the cloud level layer down below past the moon as all you hear is your road, your road will be, will ready, be ready soon. soon and then at that moment cresting over the clouds a moon bridge shoots up as you see several garu coming along mark do you recognize them as garu who are allied to the five mirrors they're from a separate they're from a sep that's connected via a moon bridge which means if you jump on the moon bridge with them you could potentially take it to the sept of the five mirrors 
Awesome. Let's go. As you jump Just on, take us to where we need to go. You jump on. You see the Garu like Mark. Do, who who's at the bridge then? If they know me, this is Jorge Storms in the Sun from the Sept of the Two Flames down in Mexico. He recognizes me. Yeah, huh. he's been to your Sept a couple times hmm. when you were a pup. Okay. He, he came in as one of the representatives to try and teach younger Garu to try and get them to join his tribe. I guess Mark will say, Oh, Jorge, right? Yes. I apologize. Your, your, your namesake escapes me for the moment. Storms in the sun. It's nice to see you again, Jorge. Mark Guys the Fallen. You know my name name, of course. Yes, Come, the moon bridge will not be open long. We are heading to the five mirrors right now. Of course. Make haste. And you make haste, and you start heading down. The moot will be called in a few days. Which is why the Sept of the Two Flames sent a few Garu to help protect this Sept in a time when so many Garu were needed for a right. But we'll hear more of that next time. Thank you to everyone who listened. We will catch you in that next episode. Bye. 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 Goodbye.